Good morning, colleagues. Well, I'm the last speaker, in case you were wondering. Um, I want to share with you uh, the idea that um, not only have we heard some great stories about low points in teaching, we've heard some wonderful stories as well about some high points in teaching. What I want to end on is the idea that, in fact, the best is yet to come. I've always been very passionate. I don't need it yet, thanks. I've always been very passionate about the history of crime and punishment. And each year I take our students to England, uh, to France, and uh, now in the future to Spain. And uh, I'm delighted to say that the first speaker this morning, Jessica Craig, um, comes with me now, and so it's passing on. It's, it's great. It's what I've been doing for years. She's a new young member of faculty, and she's doing it as well. And so it's, it's, it's great to see that. So it's nice that she started this morning, and I'm kind of finishing it off from the same department. But this was a year before Jessica joined us, and I was with a group of our students in the medieval city of uh, Rennes in France. Uh, those of you that might have been there know what a wonderful, wonderful city Rennes is. And if you have not, then, then please go there. Um, I have a house near there. Uh, you're welcome to come out and have dinner with me. Um, we'd spent the week visiting sites where duels had taken place, where executions had occurred, where church sanctuary had been taken and abused. We stood at 14th century city gates where criminals had been exiled and outlawed. And we went to old prisons that had housed the desperate prior to a sad and public death. Sunday was the rest day. And it was also the final day before departure back to the US. I planned a bicycle ride along the canal path that surrounds the city. And I invited any student who wished to to join me. Seven students did so, and we set off after coffee and croissants, uh, breakfast, taking our bicycles from that wonderful system they have in France that now exists in a number of other European cities where you can go and rent a bike for uh, up anything from 30 minutes for a full day for a very, very nominal price and return it to any station around the city that exists. It's a great system. And so that's what we did. About 20 minutes into our ride, the heavens opened. It poured with rain, as it can do in Brittany. I love cycling. I'm an avid road and mountain biker. And personally, I was perfectly happy to carry on. But I recognized that it was best to check with the group and see whether or not they wanted to do so. Because it was quite clear to me that amongst this happy band of eight cyclists, a couple of them hadn't been on a bike for a very long time. And in fact, I'm not sure one of them had ever been on a bike before. But it was OK. Everybody wanted to press on. Great. The towpath at the side of the canal got muddy. And we ended up looking bedraggled rather than chic. After a good hour and a half, we returned to the city centre, wet, dirty, happy, and smiling. The group was buzzing. As we returned our bicycles and parked them, one student turned to me and she said, that was wonderful, thank you. I've not been cycling since I was a child. I used to bike with my grandfather, and since he died, I've not been riding again before today. It brought back wonderful memories for me. I will always remember this trip, and I think I will remember the materials we have covered so much better now because I have such a strong memory to cherish. Rennes is where I went for a bike ride in the rain. Of course, I thought that was great. And I thought as well that I'd probably brought somebody into the fold of being a lifelong cyclist. On my return, I started to give thoughts as to how we at UNT can drive forward some innovation, some green innovation, and fun coursework that would bring a group of interconnected disciplines together and use my passion for cycling as a conduit to achieve that. I started to dream of a mean green bicycles across Europe class. Going to Europe with a group of students and cycling through the back roads of England, perhaps, my native country. Studying the environment, architecture, anthropology, history, theology, crime and punishment, cooking. So had this been done? Was I dreaming? Or had it been done? I was sure the answer was, yes, it must have been done somewhere. I'm not that innovative. But is it doable? Well, if it's been done, presumably it's doable. The answer was a yes and yes. 
and indeed there is. There is a model, one started by the University of Montana in association with Trek bicycles. I do not have the time, unfortunately, this morning to go through with you all of this amazing class that they run. But I do have the website, and anybody that's interested, anybody who might want to collaborate, anybody who might want to travel some of this road, the back roads, with me, I'd love to hear from you. But I do have the websites. But the publicity, okay, now I need it. I'm better with bicycles than computers. The publicity that Trek now publish on their website, as well as the University of Montana, says this, visit any college classroom across the country and you'll find passionate students with inspirational stories and ambitions. Finding a classroom setting as inspiring as the students who occupy it can be more challenging. And so Montana, in association with Trek, developed this, the Wild Rockies Field Institute. Their class runs out of Missoula, and groups of students with their professors go off and they explore a range of issues in the Rocky Mountains. They do it both as semester-long classes and as summer classes. And they literally get on bicycles and ride around. They go into small villages and towns and interview people. They look at the sociology, they look at the history, they look at the anthropology, they look at the environment. The range of disciplines that are involved in this is mind-blowing and incredibly exciting. I was so inspired by hearing this morning before I started listening to any of the speakers, we were talking about cooking because uh, of, of who was next to me at the table. And my son wants to be a chef. And it was wonderful to have those conversations. And at the time that that's going on in my mind and I'm learning about it, my mind is buzzing with the idea because I'm a legal historian. Wow, cooking, the Bishop of Rochester, he boiled his chef because his chef accidentally um, poisoned 30 people in 1530. Great, that was Smithfield Market. Smithfield Market is where the, they used to um, uh, uh, kill all the cattle before they went out to the butchers in London. Great, let's take her along. She'll come. She'll come. I don't mind if she can cycle or not. That's okay. I'll, I'll do a tandem with her, but she's coming. And so look at what they're saying here, all in the great outdoors. And this is the final part of, of, of this for me. This summer, a couple of years ago now, Trek Bicycle partnered with them. And we're always being encouraged. I see that the... the our pro provost is no longer able to be with us this morning, but we're all being encouraged to partner with people, to go outside of the university. Who else can we work with? What else can we do? This seems to me, again, a wonderful opportunity. Here they are up there in Montana, par partnering with Trek Bicycles in order that they get them. A 700-mile bike tour spanning the state's wild array of landscapes and communities, spread over a number of days. Many of these students that participated, and there's a YouTube about it on the Trek website, they weren't avid cyclists. They weren't people who get on a bike every day. They were people who recognized that this was a wonderful way in which they could learn and have a lot of fun through their learning. And so I would encourage you to perhaps, when we leave here this morning, and we've heard these wonderful tales of things we've all done wrong, and times when we've had wonderful successes in our classrooms as well, is that what I'd like to leave is with the idea is that, in fact, what we can do is look at what we've achieved so far and believe that the best is yet to come. Thank you very much indeed.